Hello everyone, our lesson for today is about water, the aqueous environment. Water is an important molecule needed by all living organisms. This lesson discusses the various properties of water and the important roles that they play in maintaining different biological processes. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe the properties of water and identify the important roles of water in different biological processes. Before we discuss this lesson, let's take a look at this motivation question. Can living organisms survive without water? So if you see here, you have different organisms, the plants, humans and animals why do you think you no know, so or what do you think is the reason why these organisms are in this state so water is called the universal solvent this is attributed to its various unique properties among these properties are the following First, water is polar. Second, water is both cohesive and adhesive. Third, water has a high specific heat. Fourth, water has high heat vaporization. And fifth, water has a high thermal conductivity. So first, water is polar. So what makes water polar? In each water molecule, the H2O, sorry, that should be a subscript, the two hydrogen atoms are linked you know, to the oxygen atom by covalent bonds. The two bonds are highly polar because the oxygen is strongly attractive for electrons, while the hydrogen is only weakly attractive so consequently there is an unequal distribution of electrons in a water molecule so it's called polar polar covalent bond with a preponderance of positive charge of the two hydrogen atoms so this this is a partial uh, positive charge and the partial negative charge on the oxygen atom when a positively charged region of one water molecule approaches a negatively charged okay, uh, region, which is the oxygen, this is the positively charged region of the hydrogen of one water molecule, then the electrical attraction between them can result in hydrogen bond. Now, hydrogen bonding are weaker no, than covalent bonds. These are weak bonds. And these are easily broken by the random thermal motions due to heat energy of the molecules. So each bond lasts only a short time. But the combined effect of many weak bonds can be profound. Each water molecule can form hydrogen bonds through its two hydrogen atoms to two other water molecules we have here if you notice here one water molecule can form two hydrogen bonds no with two other water molecules okay so this produces a network of which hydrogen bonds are being continually broken and formed it is only because of the hydrogen bonds that link water molecules together that water is liquid at room temperature with a high boiling point and high surface tension rather than a gas so actually no, after uh, when you boil no water molecules you're actually uh, through the heating you're actually breaking the hydrogen bonds no not the covalent bonds between the hydrogen and oxygen because we know that hydrogen and oxygen are both gases so at a specific uh, temperature Water molecules may <coughs> may form liquid, but at certain temperatures, breaking this bond together 
na through a specific boiling point then you are breaking the hydrogen bonds releasing na the gases another property is the cohesiveness and adhesiveness of the water molecules so what is the difference between cohesion and adhesion cohesion is described as the attraction between particles of the same substance let's say cohesion the cohesive property of water makes it possible to bond with other water no so same water they love each other they are attracted to each other no? so whoever said that no same uh same compounds no cannot be attracted together or cannot be together are wrong that is so 1950s no? so an example of that is water water could be attracted to the same no water so that attraction creates surface tension which is a measure of the strength of the water surface so usually you will see them as since they're attracted to each other so they could water could form no sphere or kind of mga lingin, like the dew drops no? when you when you put a drop of water on the table they will form no a circle now that is because of the cohesive properties of water now cohesion now uh cohesion produces a surface film on the water that allows insects not to walk on water surfaces so at the surface of water there is high surface tension that's why some insects are not capable of uh they are capable of walking through or striding through the water surface conversely addition is the attraction between two different substances now because of water's adhesive property now it is able can make hydrogen bonds with other surfaces such as glass soil plant tissues and cotton now, so adhesions just like when you say you need adhesive kato mga papilit diba you need to ad adhere something so different compounds or different molecules when you bind them together and that is adhesion now because of water is an easy property you can make ano, hydrogen bonds with other materials so in glass surface other surfaces as well in plants now they are very common water addition causes capillary action the phenomenon wherein water molecules will tow each other along when they're in a thin glass tube now the property of cohesive and adhesiveness of the water molecules are very important for the transport of water from the roots you not know, through the leaves via the uh the xylem cells you no know, in the stem you know? because they are attracted to each other they can form aggregates and since they can be attracted to other surfaces so there is a, the capillary motion you no know, creates the, the movement for the transfer of water you know, into the leaves where they could be used you know, for photosynthesis by the plants another property is the high specific heat of water specific heat is the amount of heat needed to raise or lower one gram of a substance by one degree celsius so what does it imply Water can resist temperature change for heating and cooling. Water absorbs or releases large amounts of heat energy with little change in actual temperature. Now, so, that is very important, especially for organisms that are found in the aquatic environments. So, since it takes a lot of energy in order to raise the temperature of water to 1 degree Celsius, then there will be not much change in the water temperature in a particular water body if they are exposed to very hot no, uh, temperature okay just like in our bodies also the, 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 the normal temperature is actually 37 at 38 if you have already increased by one degree celsius only then that means there is something wrong you may be having a fever because it takes a lot of heat in order to raise the temperature diba? by 1 degree Celsius. So, in it na jud kay ka na ka 38 degree Celsius. Unsa pa ako ng 39 na ka nag 40 degree Celsius. No? Nag-convulsion na siguro ka na. Okay? So, 
Water absorbs or releases large amounts of heat energy with little change in actual temperature is important for organisms living in aquatic environments as well as as well as other organisms because we are made up of water no and and so our what the, the that spe high specific heat of water that helps us to maintain not our or to to be homeostatic you no know, with uh with the environment and within ourselves okay another property is the high heat of vaporization of water so Heat of vaporization is the energy needed to convert one gram of a substance from liquid to gas. So what it what does it mean? So in order for you to make water evaporate, you need to break the bond. Not just like what I said earlier, you need to break the hydrogen bonds. And in order for you to break the hydrogen bonds, you need enormous temperature. So since it it's not that easy to evaporate water, then we we will not be easily dehydrated also it is a evaporation is a means for us not to cool ourselves because when we are uh already in very hot environment we need to uh, respire we need to uh to sweat because the evaporation of the the sweat from our body meaning we are releasing also a lot of heat so it is needed for us uh, in order to uh, to cool you know, ourselves especially when you are uh, playing you know, or when you are doing some very laborious tasks now lastly water has high thermal conductivity so water expands at it as it freezes you now unlike other liquids resulting in it becoming less dense as a solid than as a liquid okay the hydrogen bonds in liquid water are constantly being broken and restored unlike the frozen uh water which has a, spe a very specific uh conformation no? unlike here this liquid water here so this is actually less dense because in a particular volume of water you will see only uh few water molecules unlike here so we know that water is most dense at four degrees celsius now lower than that it will start to freeze and will become less dense and so it will float okay. now to summarize our lesson for today uh we ask these questions what are the different properties of water and why are these properties important for proper functioning of cells okay so that ends our lesson if you have any questions please contact me through this email or, or your uh, other instructors uh, handling the lecture for cell and molecular biology and you can also key in your questions in our or in your uh, Facebook Messenger group chat. So thank you very much and see you again in the next lesson.